We now like to look at the insert command. We've looked at select. By no means have we looked at it comprehensively, just some of the basics that will help you to navigate pretty much any SQL compliant DBMS. Let's look at insert. Insert allows us to insert new values into a table and as a result increase the size of the table from various sources. So we want to discuss insert. Insert supports three varieties. So let's list that. Insert supports three types of insert statements. And they're as follows. One, insert values. This is where you specify the name of the columns optionally as well as the values that are to be inserted into the columns. The second is an insert with a set statement and in this case we are allowed to set the names of the columns that we're inserting because in some cases you may only want to insert specific columns. For most tables only certain data is required and most fields have default values set that the DBMS will insert for you in the event that the information is excluded. So if we use insert set we may insert a subset of the values for example and rely upon a DBMS to fill in the remainder of the values for us. In addition to insert values and insert set we also have the ability to insert using a select statement. This allows us to insert values into one table from one or more tables. This is pretty neat if you have data existing somewhere within the DBMS or somewhere that's accessible to the DBMS via a connection. So there are three different types of insert statements supported by MySQL. We're going to begin by discussing insert values and the different forms of insert values. We'll also talk about insert set in this section and then in a separate section we'll talk about insert select to show you how to move data between tables within the same DBMS environment. So we have a table structure for people which contains four columns. Let's take a brief look at our column structure by looking at the description of the people table using describe people. Whenever you're attempting to insert data manually from the terminal monitor or from a GUI client, it helps to have a description in mind or documented somewhere of the table structure which includes the character or the types for the for the fields in this case they're all characters uh, whether or not nulls are permitted which column or columns are considered to be primary keys and whether or not there's a default value that'll be assigned if you omit a value for a given field so now that we know the description of the people table, the description says that there are four columns that whenever inserting data we need to fulfill, which we've shown you using MySQL import, we should define insert statements that rely upon values for inserting new data into the table structure. Let's select star from people to see how many records are there, there are six, and what accounts are there. Now we know that based on the description of the people table that there is a primary key constraint on the email field which means the email field will not accept duplicates. The primary key must be unique which means any new values that are inserted within the email field cannot be duplicated. However, other fields may be duplicated such as the phone number, first name, last name fields. So keep that in mind when inserting data either from an external source such as a text file or within the terminal monitor environment. So example one or task one is to insert new values or a new record into all columns specifying the column names. So we'll list this as specifying the column names. In order to do so we'll execute an insert into the name of the table in this case it's people and we'll list in between the first set of parentheses the columns that are to be inserted. Since we want to insert into all columns, that's the current task, we should list all columns separated by commas in between the first set of parentheses. So the syntax is insert into table name followed by 
the list of columns that we intend to insert into. If you don't specify the list of columns, which we'll show you in a separate example, then be sure to prepare values or insert values for all required fields. Otherwise, the DBMS will return an error. So the columns that we intend to populate include first name, last name, and if you intend to perform multiple inserts or inserts on a regular basis using the terminal environment, it may help to store the description of some of the tables in a text file or somewhere so that you can perform this function much, much easier. Let's move on to BizPhone 1 followed by the last and most required or required field which is email. So we've defined the column set and these are all of the columns defined in the database. Now we move on to defining the values that are to be inserted into the DBMS or into this particular table, the people table. We use the values keyword to indicate the values that are going to be uploaded and in between parentheses we will include the various values. Now it helps to use backticks or single quotes to specify the values separated by columns. So each value will be separated by column, commas, but enclosed within single quotes. We know that there are four values, so we'll set up four sets of quotes to include our values. For the first name, let's include a new record, a new person, and for last name, ditto. Let's move this to another line which it has already for us. The business phone will remain the same, does not need to be unique, neither do first or last names, but for the sake of uniqueness and clarity and readability, we'll do so. So let's include the standard phone number, followed by the email address, and then we'll attempt to update this particular or insert into this particular table consequently updating it so we're going to insert into the table people for these columns which defines all of the columns for these values and this is a one-to-one -one relationship so you need to specify the order exactly for example first name is specified first so the first value that is specified should be first name otherwise the values will end up in different columns we'll show you that shortly Let's copy this insert statement and we need a semicolon at the end for this to take effect. And notice that one row was affected, which means if we rerun the select, we'll see the new record. So here's a new record inserted properly into the database. What if we attempted to insert the same record again? You'll notice that MySQL in true DBMS fashion returns an error indicating that there is a duplicate entry and as a result did not insert the new value because the primary key constraint is set on the email field and primary key constraint is simply another way of saying that the value needs to be unique. This is one way to distinguish the record in the table. So having said that, how do we insert values into the table without specifying the list of columns? Well, there are a few ways you can do it, but if you use the insert values syntax, which is one of three, what you need to do is ensure that you specify values for each column, otherwise defaults will be inserted by the DBMS. Let's show you what we mean. Let's create a new record. So task two, insert a new record without specifying column names and we'll follow up with insert into people which is always required you need to insert into a table name followed by the values that we want to include into the database by using the values keyword now this ignores the columns but we need to ensure that we prepare values for each of the columns that are to be updated so we're going to include a new record including first name last business phone one and we can separate the values with spaces as long as there's a comma in between the values so that the DBMS is able to parse it we should be fine and let's move on to the final value which is the email address 
and now we have a new value that we or a new record that we can insert into database but we have provided values for each of the columns you'll see shortly what happens when we don't specify or we omit certain information let's insert and notice this worked perfectly we'll select star from people you'll see that the new record was inserted with no problems no errors and so on now what if we were to slightly change this command and omit the first two the first three columns let's just go at the email address for example let's see what happens in that case and let's make the email address unique since the email field requires it but if we attempt to insert notice it says column does not match the value count at row one so the column count doesn't match in other words if you insert using the values syntax into a table and you don't specify the exact number of columns you'll return an error such as the following but there is a workaround for this and that is to use the set feature or the set syntax if we use insert using set we can then specify only the columns that we intend to upload but when you use insert values it expects one value for each of the defined columns when you use insert set we can tell the DBMS which columns we're uploading and then rely upon it to fill the values with defaults as defined in the description of the table again a describe people reveals that the people table has defaults for three of the fields with the exception of the email field so when we use the set syntax we'll only need to specify email and rely upon a DBMS to fill these additional values let's show you how that would work so task to insert a new record without specifying column names and that worked task three insert a new record using set syntax and fewer columns again insert into the name of the table which is people however we'll use the set statement and for each column that we intend to provide a value we specify the name of the column let's say for example first underscore name equals and we'll specify a first name followed by email which we know is a requirement equals and we'll specify an email and we're providing two out of the four four columns that are defined not required but four columns there's only one required column that's the email column let's see how this works when we use the set statement you'll see that the DBMS will help us out by providing values for undefined columns notice we didn't return an error this time let's rerun the select from people and you'll see that first name was inserted last and business phones were inserted by the database or the DBMS engine and they reflect the values no email was inserted now in the description of the people table you notice that the default for the required field email is set to blank what happens if we were to insert a value without specifying email so let's go ahead and do that since we don't have a uniqueness constraint on any of the columns besides email we can reuse the same first name but then not specify a, a value for email let's see what happens when that is the case select star notice the email is blank but it is unique first name no constraint null null for phone and last name but email is now blank now what if we were to do that again duplicate key entry so we can only insert one blank and because the the field is a far is a primary key it must have a unique value so there's one value in this deep in this table that will clean up later on which contains blank but we can't insert another value having said that we can clean it up using other commands but the set statement allows us to easily make those changes now another variation we want to show you of using insert values is the ability to insert multiple values for the same net or for the same set of columns for example we have columns first name last name business phone and email but we specified in the first example just one record what if we want to specify multiple records simply take the existing syntax and we'll define this as task four task four is in is to insert multiple records for the same columns and you can do so using insert 
into the table name using the value syntax but what you'll need to do is separate the various records by comma and a separate set of parentheses so the first set of parentheses correlates to the first record and the second set correlates to the second record and so on there are no constraints on the names that you see here although we can make them unique certainly but the email address must be unique so we'll ensure that the email address is unique and for a second set of values let's go ahead and define them we'll just set up our single quotes we need four of them for the four columns let's go ahead and define an additional record and phone number same ditto email address and so on so now we will would have inserted two records for the set of columns defined let's copy we'll need to of course terminate this with the semicolon we've said that time and time again let's see how this works notice no warnings no duplicates the number of records two which is exactly what we wanted so a select star from people will show two new records and we didn't have to specify values for first name last name or business phone but we did again the constraint is on uniqueness in the email column so insert takes a few various forms we've shown you insert values and insert set insert values works real easily if you do specify the column names follow up the values in the same order because again if you switch the orders then they'll be inserted on a one-to-one -one basis for example if we switch last name with first name it'll be the last name will be stored in the first name column so they must match the way you specify them you can also specify values but you'll need to indicate one value per column in that particular table if for some reason you don't have all of the data required for all of the fields so you're missing some of the data then use the insert set syntax insert into people set and then set the, the columns that you are going to upload and the database will take care of filling in defaults for you and if you want to insert multiple records use the insert into the table name in this case people with values and then specify in between separate sets of parentheses the different records that are to be uploaded but of course it must match one to one the columns that are specified here so you can script this out so that it's more automated or consistent and so on. Now we did mention that there's a way to insert into a table by selecting from a different table so that's what we're going to look at next which is the ability to insert using select which can save you a lot of time and help you to move data around within the DBMS so we've looked at insert values as well as insert set insert values expects that you specify the number of columns followed by the same number of values or that you specify the exact number of values corresponding to the exact number of columns that are defined in the table so if the table has 10 columns you are to specify 10 values or you can specify the columns that you're interested in inserting to and the same number of values in the same order insert set allows us to describe the columns that we are uploading to or to specify exactly the columns that we're uploading to but what if the data already exists within the DBMS but in a different table so you may have data all over the place that you'd like to concatenate or merge into one particular table let's show you how to go about setting up such an example so task 4 use insert select and this is the insert select syntax that is to move or to copy we should say to copy records from source to destination table source could be one or more depending on how the select statement is constructed in order to make this work we will need to create a new table and populate it with records we're pretending as if we have 
an existing table or tables in our database with interesting fields that we'd like to populate into this people table that we've been working on. So first step, create a new table, table called or named, in our case we'll name it people2, just for simplicity. Step 2, populate people2 table with data. And then step 3, use insert select syntax to copy data from people to table to people table. That shouldn't be too hard. Now again, the data could exist in a text file, and then you'd use MySQL import to import the data directly into the people table or into some other table. So let's go ahead and create that new table called people2. As you know, it's quite easy to create tables at this stage. And also, this data could very well exist in a different database altogether. Then you'd simply alter your select statement to select from a different database. But that's not a big deal. We want to go ahead and execute a create table syntax. And this statement is a DDL statement, although we're focusing currently on DML statements. This is a data definition statement. So we'll create table. And the name of the table in this case, as you know, is people2. We don't need all the single quotes or back ticks if we're not using any spaces or characters that need to be preserved. So in between parentheses, we're going to specify the structure of the table. Let's say that the people2 table has slightly different field names. Instead of first underscore name, as is the case with people, and last underscore name, let's go with simpler names, such as f name, and we'll make it a car 20 doesn't have to be the exact same size, but the type should be the same or similar or compatible. Instead of last underscore name, let's use L name with a car 20 for simplicity. And we'll define an emailed field car 20 of car 20. And we'll ignore the business phone field. So we are attempting to import or insert data into the people table from a source table which will not have phone numbers. So we can always run an update statement later on which will populate phone numbers wherever they're blank. So this gives us room to explore the data manipulation languages. So we're going to create a table called people2 with f name, l name, and email fields, all character 20 sizes and types. Let's specify a semicolon and now if we execute a show tables you'll see that we have two tables people and people2 but people2 contains no data a select star from people2 reveals as such so we'll need to populate it using one of the insert statements that we have defined what we'll do is we'll use an insert with multiple rows rather than going to a text file so we'll insert into and by the way we could define this outside in the text file here and then copy and paste it so we're at step two which is to populate the people table and we'll use our people to table using insert into now if we're going to provide values for each of the columns we don't need to define the column names we simply move on to values and then specify the values that we're interested in. Now let's say we want to insert three records. Set up three parentheses as we're doing here. And in between the three parentheses include data or values for each of the columns including F name, L name, and email. So let's set up those single quotes and we'll copy this over to the other two records and then begin the population. Again, this could have been done from a text file, but this is also not a big deal since we're only introducing three new records. So the first record will specify the user's name, F name, last name, and email address. Let's move on to the next name, last name, as Muffy do and email address 
And let's move on to the last name. With a similar email address. So we have three fictitious names. So this insert statement will place three new records into the people to table. Now notice our insert into is missing table name. Let's include the table name, otherwise the statement will fail. Insert into people to the values for three records terminated by a semicolon. Let's control shift V and end this particular statement with a semicolon and notice no warnings no duplicates three records were inserted into the people two table so if we go through the history and execute a select star from people two you'll see that there's three new records these records however do not exist in the people table so that's the whole point of using the insert select syntax is to show you how to copy the data from one table over to another table so that's what we're gonna do now that insert statement, which is step three in what we're doing here, is re really easy to implement. Let's show you how it's done. Simply execute an insert into the name of the destination table, which is optional if both source and destination tables are identical. So if the source table is one name and the destination table is another name, then it is really optional. But in this case, the names of the tables are different because both tables exist within the same database. So we will include the destination table. Insert into people will specify the columns that are to be inserted, including first underscore name. This is the destination that is, not the source. Destination comes first. Last underscore name, followed by email. And instead of specifying values that are to be included on the the MySQL terminal monitor line this is where we execute the select statement which will run a query to extract the data from an existing table so we'll select F name L name and email from people to and this is all that's required it's really this simple so we're going to insert into the people table into the columns first name last name email and rely upon the DBMS to put null values or default values into the business a default value into each business phone field for each user and we'll select that data from people2. People2 contains three fictitious users. Let's control shift V to paste this value and attempt to execute the query. Notice no errors, no duplicates. Three records were inserted. Let's confirm that the values were inserted by running a select star from people. Now people contains 15 rows including the three from the people to table. It's really that simple. So we've shown you the third form of using the insert statement, which can be quite useful if you already have the data somewhere in your database. Oftentimes you get data from external sources and you may not want to include the data immediately into a primary table such as people. You may want to place it into a temporary table such as people to perhaps massage it, operate on it, clean it up, and then copy the data over. Now that we have all of this data in this particular table, how about we take it to another level, which is to run an insert against an entirely new table. What if we wanted to create a new table with even another column, let's say business phone 2 or address or whatever else, and move or copy the data from people into a totally new table? Well, in order to do so, we'll need to create a new table with the proper structure and then run the select statement. So, task five is to use the insert select syntax to copy records from people table to people three which is yet to be defined table this gives us a way to move the data around and to practice using the statement. So step one, we need to create a table named people2. Let's copy step one, and step two is similar. But it's slightly different in that the data already exists in the database. So create a new table called people3. We know the syntax. It's a create table syntax. And in fact, we just need to agree on the structure of the table. And it's in our history. So if we need to modify it any, let's copy this create table 
DDL statement into our gedit window to agree upon the structure. So in people3, we may want fname, lname. We may also want, in addition to business phone, let's go with business phone, biz phone 1, set that to car 20, address 1, we'll set it to car 30, and perhaps an address 2, which we'll also set to car 30. Now this particular table has a few more fields. We certainly could have run an alter statement against the existing people table to include these new columns, which we'll do when we look at the DDL statements, including alter. But now we're creating a new table, which has first name, last name, business phone, address 1, address 2, email. Let's add some more columns, including city, which we'll set to car 30, state, which we'll set to car 10, and let's also set zip for zip code. We'll just call it zip code car 12. Now we have a more capable table in people 3, but we're only going to copy whatever data is available in the people table. So we'll end up with many null columns, but we can always run update later on. So first thing is to create a table, people 3. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll copy it, return to a shell. We'll kill this particular command, and we've aborted the session altogether. So let's re-enter. And now that we're in, we'll use contact, which is the main database, and then Control-Shift-V to paste the statement. And we'll press Enter once it looks right. And you'll see that a new table has been created. Let's execute Show Tables to see what's there. We now have people three. Let's describe it to ensure that the right number of columns are visible. So we'll describe people three. And notice it contains additional fields. First name, last name, address, city, state, zip code, email. But it contains no data. Let's select count star from people3, and I'm using a little bit of tab completion here. When you're within the context of a database, you can use tab completion to fill or to display the names of tables quite easily. This particular table contains no data, but the data is going to come from the people table, which currently contains 15 rows. Let's do a count star against people, and it has 15 rows. So the last section here is just get the data out of people and move it, or copy it, that is, into people3. We'll use a recent statement. That's the insert select. So here it is, insert into people3. And we'll just alter this a little bit. Let's copy and paste it. So this is beneath task 5. We're going to insert into people3 the columns that are of interest. But within the people table, we have additional items. So we're going to insert into people3 based on its destination names, which include fname, lname, as well as anything else that may be of interest, such as bizphone1. So let's go with biz. And again, the order in which you target the people3 table is the same order you should select from the people table. Ensure that you're selecting one for one the right columns. So biz phone one, and we created a table, we called it just biz phone one, so we need to be sure that it's exact. But the names of the, the actual columns don't need to be identical, you just need to select them in the same order. So let's select from people first underscore name, last underscore name, followed by biz underscore phone. Let's confirm how it's labeled within the people table. Let's describe people. Within people, it's called biz underscore phone one, which is fine. So biz phone one, let's find our syntax here. And that's biz phone one. And the last field is email. So the people table contains only these four columns, but the people three table contains additional columns. But we're not concerned about those additional columns because the DBMS will help us out by inserting default values. So let's go ahead and 
run this particular command and if no errors then we should have the data inserted the 15 records momentarily notice 15 records were inserted there was one warning let's take a look at and by the way the warning isn't dumped here it's dumped to the log file unless you turn on the warnings so that it shows any errors let's select star from people 3 to see what's in there and we should see all 15 records momentarily here are the values most of the columns by the way are null but we were able to get some of the values over we may have thrown an error on the record that has a blank entry in this particular field email now let's describe people three again I don't think we defined any of the fields as being primary keys which we can fix later on with the alter statement as you can see none of the fields in people three ha are defined as primary keys so we'll use the alter statement when we look at the DDL statements later on to fix that up but all 15 values have been copied over to the people three table and then we can update records in people three accordingly so that's a little bit about using the insert statement you've seen how to do insert values insert set as well as insert select next we look at another important DML command and that's the update command which allows us to make changes to fix some of the mess that we've made thus far